right, welcome back to the Move Podcast. Coming to you live from our buddy Martin Franklin's apartment. Here we are on his uh, bedroom balcony. Not a bad look. Martin was supposed to be here. Had a little injury before we left and uh, had to pull out, so we uh, we crashed his pad. We've got the fine city of, of Tel Aviv behind us. Who showed up today. Yeah, big time. I heard I got a little grief in the local papers for, for saying that the crowds were small. Uh, but it didn't and, look that way yesterday. It did, and maybe, actually I heard from some people today that there were sections that were very, very crowded. Um, but from, well, from they made up for it today, big time. Oh my God! It was, yeah, that's that's what grand tours are supposed to look like when they leave their native country. They're mm-hmm. supposed to be twenty deep, and so it was it was cool. And I think I think too, there's something to Tel Aviv. Is is a different uh, city, a different demographic, different age. You know, it's just different than Jerusalem. But well, boy. and yesterday in in Jerusalem, ending around five o'clock, it was the beginning of Sabbat. People were. Heading home, mm-hmm. uh, and then today, you know, the streets lined, lined with huge fans. That was very, very cool to see. Yep. And before we get too heavy into today's stuff, um, we're about on the we're on somewhere we're about we're on the thirtieth floor. This is about as close yes. as Lance and I will get to the edge of this balcony. Yeah. Dave, on the other hand, is just walking up, leaning over it, and b- both of us are just like, ah, ah, anytime we get close to this no. glass wall. I don't, I don't, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it freaks me out yeah. a little bit. Yeah. I'm not good with heights or, uh, like, crowded situations. Claustrophobia kicks in, and it's... And the it's, race literally went right by us, right, right underneath us. The helicopter was, I mean, we were looking down on the helicopter right. coming through the city, and of course, you're like, "Hey, yeah. go get some footage of that." And I come back, and it's like the footage was yeah. like sort of over the edge, yeah. but not really. Well, I was I'm, gl- I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought all that up because <laughs> I just, I just just so the director of the the tour of Italy knows, I, I was I, I didn't actually even stand on the side of the road to watch the race. <laughs> I just stood right here, so it was it's all good. <laughs> I mean, I didn't break any rules, and I was I was thirty stories up. Uh, of course, what Lance is ref- referencing is the uh, director of the Tour of Italy saying that you can watch from the roadside, yeah. like everybody, but not in an official capacity. We actually got to a, a bird's eye view yeah. of the race coming by here today. Like I said, the helicopters were below us, which is wild. You don't think about that stuff when you're watching the tours. The aerial view from um, a helicopter, and they're they're navigating buildings within fifty feet. Right. It's yeah. I mean, it's a it's a remarkable feat just to televise this event. Yep. Um, but, but hats off too to Tel Aviv. I mean, this is not a small city, and and the amount of I went for a run this morning at, gosh, well, I guess I slept in a little bit, but I, I, I probably ran at 11. There was already so much out and so many people in force, uh, security, road closures. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was clear that, that you know, uh, there was not going to be anything go wrong uh, today. So uh, hats off to them. Probably a little unusual for you to watch a grand tour from this angle, like, Watching it unfold in front of us throughout mm. the day, you were you were always in a hotel, making sure you get sleep, eat, nutrition, you know, mm. all that stuff, and not watching it build up over the course of a day. And like you said, going on a run and seeing yeah. the city kind of come yeah. alive, getting yeah. ready for the stage to come in. And by the way, it was pretty boring today's stage. Yeah, it was a lot of long this is, flat. Yeah, this is what we have in cycling. And I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying. And anybody that watched. You know, it was it was pretty uneventful, which is uh, you know for the overall favorites, that's exactly what you want. Yeah. Um, I mean, you had really two moments where it was exciting, right? When Rohan Dennis wins the sprint and takes the pink jersey, and then of course the finish. So, um, yeah, I was worried. I will just say this: I was worried about those 175 guys being on a essentially what's a three-lane highway that, mm-hmm. that Israel had closed down for the entire day and then dropping straight into the city for the last five or six kilometers on twisty technical mm-hmm. turning roads, potholes, all the things you can imagine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was worried that, that maybe the mind had fallen asleep, but I, I got it, it is an Israeli miracle 
that nobody crashed in that last 5K. It is. Just just because I think that they were they were so I would have thought they would have been so used to just having three lanes. Yeah, they were. I would have in a headwind pretty much all day yeah. coming down the coastline, heading south, and that kept it across the entire road. I mean, a very wide peloton yeah, all day. Uh, that's a dream scenario. <laughs> <laughs> just right. Could we have three lanes all the time? Yeah. With new pavement? Yeah. Mm. So it was it was pretty mellow. Um, no real excitement until we saw the two pink dudes. Yeah. <laughs> well, now this is something. And I put it on, if you're, for those of y'all listening, I put it on my Instagram story. I have, I've seen some crazy ass stupid shit <laughs> over 30 years of watching bike races. You know, the, we talked about it last summer. I mean, the guy, you know, the, the, we had the tightrope walker. You have the... You have the, um, um, you know, you have the person in the field with the hay building, bales. Be building yeah. something out, a big symbol. Or, you, know, and or you get 12 um, people in a field where they're walking. They're a clock. Right. I mean, but what we saw today, <laughs> we've never seen before. We have to do our best to describe it. For I those know. who are listening to this and haven't seen it, it is on your Instagram story if yeah. you want to give Lance a follow on Instagram. But it yeah, was literally... I need followers. It was, <laughs> it was literally... It wasn't a tandem bike. Oh, it, but, it, oh but it was. It, it was a tandem, <laughs> but not a traditional tandem in the sense that it's a really long frame where both riders are pedaling in the same direction. It was literally a guy in the front, which looked somewhat like a normal riding experience, and a guy behind him with his back to him. Yep. They were facing opposite directions, but he had normal handlebars and he was, facing backwards. And, and he, they were both pedaling. And they were, I mean, it was hard, tough to say at the time. And again, when the road is three lanes across, it's hard to know how fast or slow the, the peloton is going. But these guys, these two guys, were kind of keeping up. And, and, but here's the question. <laughs> they got more TV time than any rider they today. <laughs> they did. That when, well, when it's not that exciting, then you have to <laughs> show right. shit like that. But here's the question. Right? This is, like, I want to know, because if I'm with my buddy that all of a sudden wants to do that, I say, no problem. But I'm in front. <laughs> I am not sitting backwards Can you imagine? on a bike. How, okay, how did they settle that? Was it a coin toss? Was it uh, an uphill sprint? Was it an arm wrestle? What? Because you're never going to find my ass on the back of that thing. Ever, and the guy, ever, and the ever. guy in the front was clearly doing a majority of the work. Yeah. Whoever they are, and I'm assuming local, unless they traveled with that bike. Uh, props to them. They they yeah. kind of stole the show today. They did, and and, and even the Eurosport coverage which we were watching. I mean they. They were trying to, they were just breaking it down. You know, is it an e bike? Because they were going quick. No, I, and the, and the, I think. The, like the head to toe pink the, tights was. There was, there was no uh, machinery in there assisting them. Those guys yeah. were just cranking, and it, it's a sight to see. Yeah. Um, I'll add it to our, our video version of this, which will go on, okay, on, on go. Facebook and Nobody YouTube so it. everyone can see it at some point. Or check it out on Instagram yeah, if you can't me. wait. The other thing we learned today not only that you could have a frontwards, backwards bike like that. We were all watching, and we learned or are concerned that we're not using shampoo with caffeine. Well, <laughs> you know, this is this is this is next level shit. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't even know. It's so funny because sponsors come and go in cycling, and a lot of times, you know, if it's Chevrolet, you know what it is. If yeah. it's IBM, you know what it right. is. And there, there are sponsors that come in. And you're like, what's that? I'm American. Like, what's Oh, that team's Russian. They're sponsored by Alpus, and I was like, I mean, is that bubble gum? It could be. It could be anything. It could right, be motor you're not oil. Sure, right. Well, now they have these commercials during uh, during the race, pitching caffeinated shampoo. I mean, shampoo with caffeine. Uh, it, it, <laughs> is that a, like? I guess that's a thing. That's a whole thing. I mean, do you get a kick out of that, or <laughs> I don't for real? Because I love I love caffeine, <laughs> but do you feel it? I, I don't know why I'm asking you because you don't know. But uh, you know. It was. It's been tough enough. This is mm. going to sound really lame, and it's. We're not going to sound very worldly. We couldn't even figure out what shampoos to use at the place we're staying here. No, no Martin. I got a word for Martin Franklin because, <laughs> you know, next time he flies over on his big PJs, he brings some. Uh, a sh- it doesn't have to be American shampoo, but just. It doesn't have to be caffeinated shampoo, but just some shampoo with some English on it because, <laughs> it's like you get in the shower and you're like, all right, well that. 
could be body wash. That could be shampoo. <laughs> that could be conditioner. Like, and I'm in, in my eyes, are, as you know, and as the, the viewers of this show know, my eyes are slipping. So I'm looking at this thing going, somewhere on here, it's going to say, like, shampoo or something. <laughs> some version but of But it's that. in Hebrew, and you cannot. <laughs> and I did that. And so I, I rocked some, put it in. I was like, nah, that feels like conditioner. I, I'd never use conditioner. And I was like, oh, keep trying. And it was just <laughs> comical. You can't. You can't read it. Yeah, we were even uh, in, in the, I mean, a convenience store of all things. Dave and I were struggling to figure out what, what was creamer for coffee. <laughs> I know. We just, it was comp. But people are super sweet. Oh, Everyone been, we bumped into been amazing. have been incredibly nice, yep. very welcoming. Yep. I cannot be more clear about that. In fact, some new friends introduced me to uh, Israel, Israeli beer here, Gold Star, that I've been drinking since last night. Yeah. Well, I mean, not since last night. I started yeah. back up. I took a break. Yeah, good. But good uh, really good stuff. But uh, now the folks here are awesome. This is my second time here. and um, uh, the They've food adopted the, you. Oh, well, I've got to be honest. <laughs> to a degree. I'm an honorary member. They like you here. So, but, uh, I mean, I've just, just the vibe of talking to people. Yeah, no, They're excited. Yeah. Here, and this is my take on it. They're, they're excited that you're here because... Um, they've got a team in the Giro. Yep. They want to promote that they're into cycling. Um, they love the sport, and, you know, people aren't aware of it. You know, and so you coming here and saying, yeah, I want to come because it's starting in Israel. Yeah. I think that means a lot to them. Yeah. Well, it's, it's important. It's important for uh, this country. And, you know, it's interesting. Things like this come uh, uh, come to places like Israel every so often and then you, you don't really okay we, we we see the impact today you see all the people um you see the race itself uh but you, you, you know you don't know for 20 years if all of a sudden some kid was standing on the side of the road today with his dad and was like mm-hmm. you know what like me right like mm-hmm. i suck at football baseball basketball mm-hmm. i think mm-hmm. i'll try something else mm-hmm. you know I, for me it was you know, sucking at all those things and seeing Steve Lundquist in the Olympics in 84, you know, and then going, you know what, I'll join the swim team. Yeah. And then it just goes, you just never know if there's that moment where um, 20 years from now, some kid gets to sit here and say, well, do you remember when the Tour of Italy came through? Mm -hmm. You know, and that was the moment where... uh, He wanted a bike for his next birthday. Yeah. And that was the the birth of it. Yeah. It is cool. And and I think it's a testament to the sport growing, right? I mean, as a participant for many years but as a lover of the sport you know you want to see it grow in a whole new country picking it up adopting it going hey maybe i'm interested in this and then they continue to watch the next uh 18 days in italy you know and then they watch the tour yep. tour de france and in, in july you know that's that's all growth yep. so that's a good thing is this wind okay we're good okay and then another product that that caught our attention was one out of austin that we were you were you picked up on a, a jersey sleeve i know the, the well the israeli uh, cycling academy who who you know <clears throat> i mean imagine that pep talk this morning like if you don't make the breakaway <laughs> like dude you, you you have to <laughs> you have to be there so they they were in the break all day long and then uh towards the end there was just one left and i he had Orange seal on his on his shoulders, or you know, on his sort of below his shoulder, which is a company from Austin, which makes sealant, so almost like stands or uh, these things that as as tires now as you know, newsflash people, we will not have inner tubes forever, mm-hmm. uh, and so now they the the tire uh, is is basically sealed on the rim, and so you need the sealant just to make sure that. Uh, if anything punctures the, the the tire within reason, that it'll seal up imme- almost immediately. So Orange Seals is cool, uh, young company out of Austin, and, they, and they're they're all over the race today. It's like, very wait cool. a second. We're gonna jump back for a second to what happened yesterday because we didn't have a chance to right. to really dig into it, and that's some of the the time loss of yep. some contenders, overall contenders. Right, and that's you know that's just for the listener. That's the problem with trying to record this thing as quickly as we can because mm-hmm. if, if we're looking at the cycling sites to try to uh, to get time splits and et cetera, you know the, those don't post uh, that quick. They, they post pretty quickly, but not quick enough for us. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, I, and and I would have you know as soon as we got off the air and, and looked online, and I realized that Chris Froome lost 37 seconds, and the whole show I talked about, well, it's not one or lost. I'm going to back that. I'm going to back off that. I'm going to come back. 37 seconds is a lot of time. In a, I, in a, very sh- a lot of time in a very short well, time I mean, trial. Yeah, I mean, a, 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 
you know, a, a thinker would look at it and go, that's four seconds a kilometer. Mm-hmm. That is a lot in a time trial. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a smoke show. And so, uh, and then it, Fabio Aru loses a minute, Perez loses a minute. Tom Dimelan, uh, that was a big thing yesterday. I wish I would have I had that stuff right in front of me. I, I just figured Froome lost 20 seconds. We can deal with that. He crashed in the morning, you know, a little nervous. But 37 seconds is, look, his race isn't over, but that's a lot of time. Yeah. Um, we did see a change of the leader jersey. Amazing. Which, done from an intermediate sprint, which Amazing. you don't usually see that happen. Well, what you don't see is you don't see uh, the prologue specialists, time trialists, pursuiters beating some of the fastest sprinters in the mm-hmm. world uh, for the time bonus, which then got him the pink jersey. Um, you know, I think it speaks to two things. One, obviously, Rohan Dennis really, really, really wanted the pink jersey. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you just don't sprint that fast. Um, actually, it speaks to three things. He, he really, he was hungry. Uh, two, the lead out that the Team BMC gave uh, before the, the intermediate sprint was, I mean, he was literally like sitting on a motorcycle. I mean, th- they were going that fast, so people just couldn't get up there. And three, that team is, you know, I don't know how public it is or isn't. I think it's, it's out there a bit, but that team's in trouble. I mean, Andy Reese, uh, one of the most amazing men to come into cycling, one of the most generous men of all time. Andy Reese, if you think about this, I bet you Andy Reese, over the course of between Phonak and BMC, I bet you, they, put, put this in your pipe and smoke it, people. It, in the decade that he was in cycling, and unfortunately he passed just a couple of weeks ago, I bet he spent close to $200 million. Wow. That, and that is, that's a real number, and that, that is a lot of money. And with his passing, then uh, leaves the team in question. Mm-hmm. They've been very outspoken about whether or not they can continue. Um, so, point being, uh, other than to say Andy Reese is a fucking legend, uh, um, he, they have to have results. And results mean riding around in the pink jersey or winning, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, they're, they're, they're working hard to, to find a replacement. One of the things that came to mind for me, is, and I, I've heard dialogue, we've talked about it. Sometimes, you know, you, you don't want to carry the jersey and have your team work their butts off oh, for right. too long. Does a part of you think Dumoulin just like, well, let this go, we're talking about a second or two? A Maybe. part of me? No, all oh, of me. All okay. of me knows. Tom Dumoulin's okay. like, hey, take it. Thank you so right. much. Okay. Like, you know, tomorrow... 230 kilometers to the south of this country if it's windy it's it, that area is exposed um you don't want to be that team unless you're bmc you do want to be that team but yeah yeah i mean bmc has had a, a lot of reason to get the jersey like you said but maybe they're just like let them have it yeah. right yeah. they're talking about a second or two well he he didn't say that because he wasn't contesting the sprint the the, the miracle is that i mean dennis actually beat Viviani, who won the field sprint at the end. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy's one of the fastest guys in the world. Mm-hmm. So either that lead out was just hellaciously fast, or he was just so motivated and inspired, and maybe Viviani was off the wheel a little bit and wasn't in position, but impressive. You, you seem to take notice of the physique of sprinters yeah. as changing. Changing. How so? Um, gosh, you know, when I, when I grew up racing, the, the sprinters were, they were big, not just wide, strong guys, but the, they were, they were also tall. I mean, Cipollini was very tall, Guido Bontempi's tall, Olaf Ludwig, not as tall as those guys, but tall. These, th- we're seeing this, not to say a, t- a tall guy or gal can't be the best field sprinter in their own. I'm thinking about that the little Israeli kid on the sidelines going oh i'm tall lance said i can't do this yeah uh, <laughs> basketball but uh um it, it, you've seen this move to uh um to smaller sprinters and we're really we you know in my mind i was like oh my god this is a thing it was when cavendish came on the scene and just started winning everything i was like oh my god this is a thing it was when a just being uh small but also his position in the sprint is something I mean, they're probably going 40 miles an hour, 65 kilometers an hour at the finish. Mm-hmm. Aerodynamics matter mm-hmm. at that speed. And so if you can, although today the, the kid who got second, this Jacob 
Well, what's that? How you say his last name? Marechko. Marechko. I mean, I've never seen anybody we both, that low. We both looked at each other like he was sprint, sprinting like with his chin down towards the handlebars, butt he, up in the air. He was flossing his teeth with his front tire. <laughs> it was the most fucked up thing. I mean, and, and I'm like, it didn't work well for him, but well, please look up. <laughs> it was, it was a little bizarre. Yeah. So, but they're all. I mean, they're they're just. It just seems they're getting uh, tight. You know, more compact. I guess is the word. Yeah, power to weight. Power to weight, and at that speed, it's it's it all matters. Mm-hmm. Now, what was in your mind? And I think I know the answer to this. What was the move that happened today? Yeah, I mean, for me, what, it was Rohan Dennis. I mean, for, again, I just went on and on about it. But for him to to actually win that sprint uh, and take the jersey, yeah, I mean, it's hard to argue with with Bibiani who who won the stage, but. I think everybody, you know, if you were, the odds were on him to win that. They were no, the odds on Dennis to take the jersey in an intermediate sprint, Mm -hmm. super low. And so um, I have to give it to him. And there was another move that you pointed out when, and just the instinct of sprinters is mind blowing to me sometimes. You know, they have a wheel that they're following, but you, you know, we were watching Viviani just see something moving out of this side early out of his left side and he just makes that jump like the fact that no one just to know that no one's on that wheel or if they are he's going to take it yep. and that launched him what by the way it didn't matter if anybody was on that wheel he was coming over he was going to take he it he didn't care he was coming but uh, you know he, he you know of course for the fan who's never watched cycling and never listened to the show they do not have blinkers so he was not putting it on it he was just going <laughs> but um, quick step uh, for as good as they've been this year they just got a little disorganized at the end I mean this is a, obviously a technical confusing finish so it's it's easy for teams to get quote unquote lost um, and he lost his guys and as we were watching Eurosport Sean Kelly and the other guy I mean like, oh he's, he's, he's way too far you know and he just he weaved his way back up to that position and, and when and when this young kid uh, Moresco came by him I mean that was his lead out he got a lead out from the kid who got second. He didn't mm-hmm. get a lead out from his team, um, but that's that's the instinct of, of what makes those guys great. And yeah, uh, know, but that's uh, that. No part of him when when he went to go catch that wheel. No part of him thought, "Well, gosh, I wonder if somebody else is on the wheel." No, no. I you know. just go. And that's you that's know that's what uh, makes a good sprinter. Uh, things like that. And they that's just... what also <laughs> makes crashes happen. Right, but. Um, he, 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 you know, in that moment, their their brain isn't thinking like, "Oh my God, I hope I don't uh, knock somebody over." Mm-hmm. No, they don't. They're, they're the, these guys are monsters. Aggressiveness has a lot to do with they, it. <laughs> they shampoo a lot with caffeine <laughs> shampoo. Must that must be it? Yeah, I know. I couldn't help but watch those commercials, thinking, "Well, what else do I need with caffeine? Should my deodorant. should my underwear have caffeine? No deodorant. <laughs> okay." Uh, a few comments from uh, the Facebook posts um, from yeah, last yes, yes, I'm stage. wearing pants today. <laughs> How about you people that are like, why is he not wearing pants? I mean, have you never had a pair of gray pa- uh, beige pants? <laughs> there, there were some photos that did, for a fleeting moment, it looked like you had no pants on. I know, but I, I did have pants on. And there were some good comments. What would you do if I rolled out with no pants? I just do the show with no pants. That's no. <laughs> fine. Oh, shit. Uh, here's a couple of uh, uh, messages that came in uh, from the post on the last stage. Uh, Dolly says, hey, Lance, good to know you're in Israel. My father, uh, I'm sorry, my grandfather, who is a huge fan of you, would be the happiest man on the planet if he knew that you watched uh, the race together with his grandson. Okay. Uh, so if you want to watch the race live from the best spot in Tel Aviv, uh, you're very welcome to come to my balcony. Wow. <laughs> I just thought that was cool. Uh, Dolev invited us over, thinking about his grandfather, That's a big cool. fan of yours. And You should have uh, come to our balcony. I know. We got plenty of room. Yeah. So anyhow, very nice of them to reach out. Lots yep. of very messages cool. from, yep. from locals. Uh, Patrick writes, uh, Lance, I love you, man, but the skinny jeans and the legs crossed like that? Not a strong look. <laughs> <laughs> but I had pants on. You did have pants. I thought, I thought, I thought, every, I thought skinny jeans are cool now. You look fine. You look fine. I'm going to some, some, get some, some, some baggy gerbos. Someone did, I'll be back. did say you're going a little back on us. Yeah. Whatever. That's all right. I love, I love these. This is actually the same, uh, same, 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 same brand, brand or whatever. Color? It's like it's, they look, I think they look nice and they're like real stretchy, so it's just comfortable. 
Okay. Uh, Casey. I didn't says, realize this was going to be so fashion <laughs> pants? focused. This is all weird. Right. It's all right. Casey writes, uh, y'all look like crew chiefs debating if you want your driver to pit for tires. Talking about our headsets now. Oh, right. I mean, this is the worst. <laughs> I cannot believe that I'm wearing a Madonna headset. <laughs> God. Those were little earpieces and a tiny little yeah. little thing. And one last thing. Dan Ron says, welcome to Israel and have a great time. Thank you, buddy. We are having a great time. Yeah, we did. Everybody's this country's been... Good, yeah. uh, Went for about that run on the beach this morning was just amazing. I thought Beautiful. it was cool last night, too. We, we got to go to like a, 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 a little local bar. Like, yep. you know, not like the club. Which is not really the no. thing, <laughs> but just no. like a little local neighborhood bar, and then uh, just a great restaurant. Do you remember? Yeah. It? Can you say the name right off the top of your head? Oh God! It's uh, it was a, it was a, you know Tyson you, Cole at Uchi is going to kill me, but this was some of the most. It was a sushi place, but it was um, some of the most inventive and creative and fresh sushi. I mean, that's what Tyson does so well yeah. at Uchi and Uchiko, which has gotten. Yeah, global no, it, recognition it's, it's, it's out of like, Austin. Yeah, it's like world famous now. But this place was. We were all kind of yeah melting. To, to, topo Lopo. How do you say it? Topo lo pompo. There you go. I mean it. Anyway, <laughs> really, really good. And they had this crazy ass chef who kept. I love it when you go to this place and they're like, "Okay, do you want to order or do you want him just to bring the stuff?" And I was like, <laughs> "Okay, is this where we, you know, show if we're cool or not?" Because. You know, you're, you're supposed to say, no, I, let's let him create right. the menu, which we did. It was incredible. I have never eaten so many. This is, we won't go on it too long, but it was just a great experience here. I've never eaten so many flowers. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of sushi, sushi dressed with flowers. Skinny jeans and eating flowers, baby. <laughs> On a roll. This is the new Lance. (laughs) Hey, we welcome your comments, uh, any messages, any questions you have about what's going on uh, throughout the Giro. Um, We'll be covering stage three tomorrow, but send an email if that's easier for you. You can comment on social media, but uh, the move at we do. That's right. That's a new email because we have a new name Mm -hmm. of the show. The move. We'll see who makes the move tomorrow. I suspect it's in yet another... Well, what I would bet my life on is that the Israeli Cycling Academy is in the break. Mm-hmm. they got to do it while it's in their home yeah, country, of right? Course. Of course. They'll be in the break. And then... The, so, Because I, I don't know... I really... I don't know shit about field sprinting. The, the only thing I, that I think I can speak to is the difference between 165 kilometers and 230-something mm-hmm. is a mm-hmm. big difference, mm-hmm. especially if it's windy. So you might uh, you might see different faces and names up there, but just because of the, it's the longest longest stage of this tour of Italy, and so yeah, I was surprised today. I think they were just under four hours. Yeah, like that, and a big tour. That's not a long day. You know, it, let me just put that in perspective. You have ridden a hundred miles in four hours, right? I know you don't believe that, but I believe that you have. I have done that. Yeah, see, you could you could <laughs> you could have ridden today. Yeah, they were cruising. Yeah, they they weren't look like they didn't look like they were suffering. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we'll uh, we got to get going because we got to go find that bike, like that that backwards, <laughs> that two man. By bike. the way, just on that, I mean, I, you've seen these things where people like weld cars together, like two cars together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like the front and the front. Have you ever seen that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like that. So for people, that and are, I've seen it now. Austin's like a hipster town. You see a lot of double decker bikes, tall bikes. Those are called tall bikes. Tall bikes, right? Yeah. But never. The dude in you the ever, back. Have you ever ridden a tall bike? No. I have. I was, really? I was out one night and just... How just, do they get on those? I've never uh, seen anyone start. Well, there's steps on them. There's, there's steps to, you know, to, to, getting up there is really not a problem. Uh, it's, it's A, if, if you had to stop suddenly getting down is a problem. <laughs> right. But I'd had just enough Lancerita that some guy's like... <laughs> I bet you won't ride my tall bike. And this Where did this the, happen? This was on the east, this was on the east side when the east side was like OG. And you know, like if if you had an art gallery, it was an art show on the east side. If you had an art gallery over there, I mean, that was as that was as core as you could get. And um, yeah, some guy was there. He's like, "Hey, I bet you won't ride my tall bike." And I was like, "You you want to bet me?" You did I'll, it. I, I said, "I'll ride anything." I'm impressed. Yeah, got up there, did a lap, came back, you know, got off. No no, no harm, no foul, no crash, no nothing. <laughs> Big points with the hipsters. Well, if the uh, the pink guys on the duo bike um, are listening, yeah, um, good job, bring guys. Bring it by, we'll try it. Yeah, no, <laughs> we won't. <laughs> well, you if you go on the back, <laughs> I'll try it. Yeah, thanks for. He said, you, "Didn't he just say he'd ride anything?" 
You're right. Did he just say that? I know. We can edit that out, though. Now he's yeah. backing down. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in to The Move, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. We're going to be down at the Ramon Crater um, doing, a, doing a fun little thing, doing a ride with some kids, talking to some people. Uh, and we're going, to, we're going to come to you live from there. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, really, really, really beautiful part of this country, part of the world. And uh, you, you guys will enjoy seeing it. Thanks, JB. Thank you. Thank you.